Hey everybody, Kathleen Henderson here. I'm in my bathroom today because today's DIY for day four on Thursday of Master Your Metabolism is dry brushing. I have my dry brushes here and we're actually, hey Ruth, <laughs> we are actually going to do a little dry brush demo here and I have to tell you that this is way outside of my comfort zone but I am doing it for y'all. Um, funnily enough, this today's DIY topic has probably generated the most comments and interest, although the energy balls from yesterday and actually the cacao latte from Tuesday um, have generated a lot of buzz too. But if you're like me, you're probably really curious to know what is dry brushing, what are the benefits, why would I do this, how do I do it, so, just for y'all, I'm going to show you, and I want to give you a couple of disclaimers. Um, number one, I am brand new to dry brushing. It's one of those things that has been on my radar for years, but it's just, I guess it's never been high enough on my priority list to add in, although I've been getting closer and closer. And then with this Master Your Metabolism event that we're doing all week this week, I thought, you know what, this is the perfect time to jump in and learn how to dry brush and start adding it into my overall wellness routine. So let's talk about dry brushing and the benefits. You probably already know, or maybe you saw our posts in the Facebook group today, earlier this morning, but dry brushing, it's basically good for the skin and it's good for your lymphatic system. So you are using a soft brush we're not brushing so hard that we are like irritating the skin, but it's a soft, light touch with the brush and you are exfoliating those dead skin cells and it helps to unclog the pores. It helps to unclog your skin and get rid of junk that your skin collects during the day, during the normal course of life. It also stimulates the lymphatic system. So I'm not an expert on all of this, but I'm sure you're familiar with some of your lymph nodes they're um, in this general area of the neck and I think on the back of the neck as well. Um, there are some in the underarm area. There are some kind of in the, um, like this area of the body and behind the knees, I think. Maybe there are more. And if any of you are more knowledgeable about this than I am, please chime in and tell us. Uh, Jennifer Wilson was mentioning earlier that she loves to dry brush. so. She probably knows more about this than I do. And I know we have other folks who are, you know, into health and nutrition and even in the um, maybe massage or more medical type fields that might be able to share your wisdom with us. So please chime in if you know more about this. So basically we are targeting the skin, the health of the skin. And you know, the skin, I'm sure you've heard this, you know this, the skin is our largest organ, but we kind of, forget about it being one of our important organs. We forget about it being, you know, kind of the, um, it's like the gateway into our body. So it makes sense that we would want to take care of it and help it function well and help keep it clear and clean so that things can flow in and out of it um, that need to. Hey, Jennifer, you are watching. So I was just telling everybody that you are more knowledgeable about this than I am, I'm sure, because you have, it sounds like you've been dry brushing for some time. So please chime in and share your wisdom and your experience with us. And um, so anyway, we're talking about keeping the skin clear and clean, detoxing the skin, exfoliating the skin, and then the lymphatic system. So the, hey Denise, the lymphatic system is obviously very important for the flow of lots of things through the body. Hey Debbie. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, I learned this about dry brushing, is that we want to brush towards the heart and towards the lymph nodes. So whichever area you're brushing, you wanna to brush towards the lymph nodes in that area. And I'm gonna show you, I, I'm gonna to attempt to show you. Again, remember, I am a total newbie, dry brush newbie here along with y'all. So if I can do this on live video for y'all, I promise you can do it by yourself in the privacy of your own home on your own, okay? Hey, Heather. So skin and, oh, Kathy ordered, the dry brush set, good for you, great. So you can experiment with this too. 
So we are um, targeting the skin, we're targeting the lymphatic system, keep things flowing and moving and circulating properly. When you dry brush, it can stimulate your circulation. And um, hey, Dee Dee, so a couple more tips that I learned is that one, you should, so a good goal is to aim to do it daily. I've already shared this when we talked about our goals for Master Your Metabolism this week. I just, I know that I'm not gonna be able to do it daily because you are supposed to do it right before a shower or a bath. So that's the second tip, is always do it before a shower or a bath so that you can you know, rinse and totally remove all those dead skin cells that are gonna flake off. Doesn't that sound lovely? Uh, a third tip is that you want to do it in your shower, stand in your shower or in your bathtub. I, this, I know it's kind of gross, but really we're all losing dead skin cells every day, whether you dry brush or not. Dry brushing is gonna really help very intentionally exfoliate those dead skin cells. Hey, Abby. So if you think about the fact that you are removing a bunch of dead skin cells, you probably want to do that in the shower or in the bathtub where you can wash all of those away, right? Okay, so that's kind of obvious, but so those are a few tips. Aim to do it daily. I was in the process of saying, I know I'm not gonna be able to do it daily because I don't shower every day and I'm not, I don't apologize for that. It's actually, I guess depending on who you ask, but I would say most, most people who know about health and nutrition would agree that it's actually better for our skin and for our health not to shower every day. And that's true for washing your hair as well. Um, washing your skin or washing your hair every day, the more often you do it, the more it's stripping the natural oils and just exposing your body, leaving it more vulnerable. So the body actually has like natural oils and so does our hair and they're there for a reason to keep the skin healthy and to keep our bodies healthy even as a part of you know one of the lines of defense for our immune system and so i do not shower every day it it saves time and it um, protects my skin so i do i didn't plan to talk about all of this i do what I call, I call it a birdie bath because that's what my mom always called it. I have a friend from Mongolia. She's a native Mongolian and she calls it a Mongolian bath. So I don't, maybe you have a term for it, but um, where you just wash the, you know, the parts of your body that probably do need a little bit of a washing every day. Um, I do that super quick and I don't, hey Mary, I definitely don't wash my hair every day. I would love to stretch out my hair washings to at least once a week or even longer, but I actually experimented with that and it got really funky and I had some issues. So I'm back to washing my hair about every three days. I wash my hair about twice, ideally twice a week, maybe three times a week, depending on um, that week's activities and you know, what happens to my hair. So anyway, there's a little, that's why I'm not gonna dry brush every day because you wanna do it before you shower and I don't shower every day. So I'm gonna aim to dry brush. My goal is to dry brush three times a week. Um, yes, and I, one of my other goals is to take an Epsom salt bath, a detox bath once a week too. So you could definitely, and that's one of the other things we were posting about today. In, oh, Denise calls it a bird bath too, great. So maybe that's, <laughs> Maybe I'm not alone in calling it a, a birdie bath. Um, but you could definitely pair your dry brushing with the Epsom salt bath that we've been posting about. And also I wanna make sure to remember to mention that Slim and Sassy oil, and I'm gonna show you all of this in a minute, is a great addition both to dry brushing and to the Epsom salt bath. So the Epsom salt bath has benefits as well. And maybe you already know about this, but if it's new to you, Epsom salts have uh, magnesium. It's a form of magnesium. Many of us are magnesium deficient and that can play into a lot of different health concerns and also sleep. So somebody, I think it was Kathy was mentioning earlier that she's not a big bath person, but she's trying to learn to like baths because of the health benefits especially combined with Epsom salts and essential oils. And I totally agree. So I, at our other house where we lived before we moved to the farm six months ago, we had no bathtub. I lived without a bathtub in my house for nine years, y'all. We, I raised babies in that house. We had a utility sink that we bathed them in and then they learned to take showers at an early age. And I always said it didn't really bother me because I'm not really a bath person. They had ni we had nice walk-in showers and I loved that. But as I started getting into essential oils, 
I really started wishing for a bathtub because I kept reading about and hearing about all of the benefits of soaking in a bath with Epsom salt and essential oils for various purposes, for the muscles, for helping to soothe tired and sore uh, muscles. It helps your skin. It helps um, your skin be more um, radiant. It helps to address skin irritations and it helps the body to detox. It actually helps to draw out toxins and get rid of them. Um, so it goes hand in hand what we're talking about today, the dry brushing and the Epsom salt bath. For the, the Epsom salt bath, there was a recipe posted. There's not like an exact recipe. You wanna use, I think about one to two cups Epsom salt. If you're really wanting to do a detox bath, you use about one to two cups Epsom salt. And I think it's a good idea to also include baking soda. Ruth, if you're still there, you can chime in too. Ruth is an expert on detox baths because they've had a lot of detox issues in her family and heavy metals and things like that. So Epsom salt and baking soda, you can also add apple cider vinegar and then essential oil. So today we're talking about Slim and Sassy. That's a great one to use for detoxing. I often like to use Balance. That's one of my favorite oils for my Epsom salt bath. Balance, uh, frankincense is another favorite. Those are both great for, hey Rachel, those are both great for like stress, just for calming and relaxing. They're also great for muscles and joints, helping to soothe any discomfort, any uncomfortable areas of the body. And um, they're just some of my favorite scents. You can use all different, you know, the sky is the limit when it comes to choosing essential oils. Hi, Samantha, for you. Okay, apparently this is a very popular topic, the dry brushing, y'all. Everybody wants to see how to dry brush, right? So if you're just hopping on, you missed me saying that I'm a total newbie to dry brushing. I'm right along with y'all. So if I can do this on live camera, you, I promise you can do it in, at your own house by yourself in your own bathroom or wherever. So if you're just hopping on now, um, make sure after this is over to go back and watch the entire video or watch somebody's demonstration because you need all the tips about when to do it and a few factors that are important when you are um, just getting started with dry brushing. So I'm gonna keep drinking my water. When you're doing the detox bath, when you are dry brushing, just like when you go to get a massage, anytime you're working with like the lymphatic system and the skin, it's good to make sure you're very properly, hi Katie, uh, hydrated. So I'm gonna keep drinking my water here. Especially because I'm talking and my throat is getting dry, but you wanna make sure you're hydrated, drink before, drink after. And I'm going to show you my, the brush set that I have. I posted a link for it. I posted it before a couple days ago, I think. And I also, it's right here posted with this video in the post description. So if you need a dry brush set and you want this set, you can just click on that link and get it from Amazon. And there's also a link with a little demo from the company who sells this dry brush set, um, giving you a quick walkthrough. If you'd like to watch that, I think it's only like two minutes long. So um, as you continue to familiarize yourself with the method. So again, I'm a total newbie at this. So take the, take what I'm saying and showing you with a grain of salt. I'm still learning, but I did watch several, several demonstrations and I've been reading about this for a long time. So I have the general concept and um, we can learn together. So this set actually comes with this little brush that is for the face. It's a softer, smaller brush that you can use to dry brush your face. And then it comes with these um, two brushes. One is firmer, a harder bristle, and this one is softer. So since I'm just getting started, I'm gonna use this softer one, and then we wanna work our way up to the firmer one, but I don't wanna risk damaging my skin. So it takes a little while to get used to the amount of pressure to use. We definitely don't want to irritate, we don't want to be dragging you know, a firm brush, digging into our skin and irritating it. So until I get the hang of it, I'm gonna be using this soft one. And then it has this handle that you can insert into either one of those um, brushes. Of course, now I can't do it. I had this a minute ago, there it is. And this is for doing it on your back and on your stomach. Okay, so are you ready? This is, and I'm, I have to, you know what? I should grab, I'm gonna dart off camera for one second and grab this little crate to prop my foot up on for y'all. I should have thought of that. I'm trying to get all of this on the camera. 
Can you see my foot like this? So you want to start with, who is that? Hey, Jillian, I know you've been waiting for this. You have your popcorn ready? Again, if you're just hopping on, I'm a total newbie, so that's my disclaimer. I'm learning how to do this with you all too. Denise says, good luck, thank you. I appreciate the support, thank you everybody. So I think, I think that you actually want to dry brush um, naked. Obviously I'm not gonna do that for our demonstration today. Hey Nikki. So um, just a little side note, I do have clothes on, um, but when you do it on a regular basis, I think it's easier and better to do it without any clothes. Obviously, if we're gonna be standing in the shower to do it, yes. So here we go. So you start with your feet and you wanna aim for about, can you all still hear me when I'm talking back here? I hope, I feel like it's a little echoey in my bathroom because I don't have many textiles in here yet to absorb the sound. Can you hear me when I stand back here? Can someone give me a thumbs up? I know the comments are on a little bit of a delay can everybody hear me? Kathy says, go girl. So you start on your, with the soles of your feet. I got a thumbs up. Okay, good. So I'm going to stand back here so you can see my whole body. Um, you start on the soles of your feet and you want to do 10 strokes. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the sole of your foot. And then you're going to work your way up the leg. I'm not going to take the time to do like the entire thing because I know you don't all, you don't want to watch me, um, standing here doing 10 long strokes on every area of my body. So I'm gonna kind of condense this. This is the abbreviated dry brushing, but just make sure when you're doing it yourself that you do about 10 strokes and long strokes overlapping on every area of your body. So start on the soles of your feet. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then you do the top of your foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're kind of like overlapping, so you're hitting all of the areas of your skin, all of the surface, and then you just work your, your way up the leg. It's very self-explanatory. I'm sure y'all can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's totally normal for your skin to get kind of pink during and, and for your skin to look pink after you dry brush. Um, you don't want to press so hard that it's irritating or like gouging your skin. If it's red or if it's stinging, that is not good. But it is stimulate. It does not hurt. Debbie's asking. It just feels like. Um, have you ever used like a pumice stone? Pumice. How do you say that word? On your feet, like in the shower or the bath, or um, it's not an unpleasant sensation. I know it sounds like it might be irritating, but it's not. It actually, it, it feels, um, I don't know how to describe it. It just feels like you're, it feels like you're exfoliating. It feels a little bit like sugar scrub. If you've used a really coarse sugar scrub or a salt scrub to really exfoliate your skin, that's kind of how it feels. So it doesn't feel soft, but it doesn't, feel, it doesn't hurt. So you just work your, your way up the whole leg like this and you do the back. And so I guess there are lymph nodes right around here. So we're brushing up to those lymph nodes. And then again, there are lymph nodes like in this general area, I think. And so you just keep going up the leg and you go up, you know, on all the sides. So you don't need to watch me doing all of this, right? You know how that works. So just remembering to do long strokes and 10 strokes on each area. Um, and then you do both leg, you know, do your other foot, the other leg. And then, so a couple of things when we start getting up to this area of the body on the stomach, they said, hey Lisa, um, they said make sure to use a soft, if you opt to start with that firmer brush or if you, if you buy a different set or a different kind of brush, or maybe you, <laughs> Jillian's baby loves watching me. Hi baby. <laughs> awesome, I'm your afternoon entertainment on this rainy Thursday. Um, just make sure to use something soft when you're working with more delicate skin. Like this set that I have, it, again, it comes with the, the softer bristles and the firmer bristles. And since I'm just starting, I'm starting with the softer bristles and then it has the face, the softer face brush. But so definitely use something soft on the stomach and on, like this, this skin is more delicate here in the neck. But so on the stomach, 
from the belly button and down. You want to brush down like this. And some people will say you can use a circular motion like this, so that's okay too. But from the belly button and down, you want to brush down, belly button and down. And then from the belly button and up, you want to brush this way, or you can do clockwise circles like this. And same thing here, um, when we're up here, we want to be working towards the heart. So that's why we're brushing up from the belly button, and then we're brushing down like this, soft um, circles or soft long strokes like this. And then the arm, we want to brush up towards the heart, again, and towards these lymph nodes here under the, in the underarms, the armpits. So you're going to brush up. You're supposed to do your hands too. Sorry, you're supposed to start with the palm of your hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the back of the hand. And then we just come up the arm like this. Just make sure, again, I'm doing a condensed version here. Um, but it really should only take, I don't know, like maybe five minutes to do your whole body. Jennifer, are you still there? How long does it take you? you've been dry brushing longer than some of us, how long does it take you to do your whole body with the dry brush normally? I'll watch for your comment because it's delayed for me here. So you just do your whole body. And then I was watching a demonstration that talked about the importance, especially for ladies, about the underarm area because of the proximity to the important tissues here and because of the lymph nodes there that we want to pay special attention here so they said, again, you can either go around or you can just do short, straight strokes, but not to skip the um, underarm area. So you do it that way towards the heart. And then, obviously, I'm really only showing you this side of my body, but you want to make sure to balance it out and do your entire body, both sides of your body. So I'll just for my own benefit here, I'm going to balance it out by doing my other hand and my other arm while I'm talking. And then I already have makeup on for the day. Again, this is something that you want to do right before a shower. Jennifer says it takes her about five minutes as well. Okay, so really once you get the hang of it, it does not take very long. You're just covering all of the surface area of your body. Um, but since you're doing it right before you shower, you're probably not going to have makeup on if you shower in the morning, then obviously if you shower in the morning, this is a great way to start your day. Oh, and did I finish saying this earlier? I started to say that one of the things that dry brushing does is increases the circulation. You can see how it would stimulate circulation. And so some people get a little bit of an energy boost from it. So two things, one is that's a great way to start out your day in the morning. And two, it's probably not a good way to end your day by um, increasing your circulation and your energy. It could rev you up a little too much for sleeping at night. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about working it into your routine. It's definitely recommended as a way to start your day. Um, although if you're combining it with an Epsom salt bath, for me, I don't know about you, but I tend to do those kind of baths in the evening, like at the end of a long day. So just keep all of that in mind and you can play around with it. Maybe it won't rev you up too much and it's fine for you to do it at night in combination with the bath, but just experiment with it and see what seems to work best for you. And then what I was also saying is that since you're doing it before a shower and a bath, you're probably not gonna have makeup. I'm not gonna do this right now because I have makeup on, but what you wanna do is um, just circular, gentle circular motions around the face um, and the neck too. Jennifer says, yes, after dry brushing and diffusing oils while I shower, I feel great. She feels great. Awesome. I'm really excited to start working this into my routine because, like I said, I've been reading about it and hearing about it for a long time. Um, and at first, I, um, I think it was Faith who said, you know, what is this dry brushing thing that you're talking about? She said, I assume you're not talking about, like, a brush in your hair. So no, it, we're not talking about a dry brush in your hair. We're talking about actually brushing your skin. And um, that's been on my radar for a long time. So I'm excited to get started with that. So it's really simple, y'all. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to show you is um, the slim and sassy part. So here's my soft brush. This is how you can kind of increase, like up the benefit factor of your dry brushing is to add slim and sassy 
And the way you would do that is just to take a few, put a few drops in your hand and then um, just put it on the brush like that. Sorry, I should have done this before I started brushing, but I think I did not, um, I did not brush the side of my, my leg on this side, so I could do it here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you just put a few drops of Slim and Sassy on your hand and then just kind of run it over the bristles of the brush. And because of the ingredients that we talked about yesterday, same ingredients as in the gum that we talked about yesterday, peppermint, ginger, lemon, grapefruit, is it only four? I felt like there were five. What am I missing? Um, anyway, all of that can work. We're aiming at our metabolism, remember, and we're aiming at um, the skin health, the skin being our largest organ of the body. And what, what else was I going to say about that? Oh, did I say this already? I think I forgot to mention that some people report that dry brushing can actually break down cellulite in your body. So how cool is that? I know a lot of us might have certain areas of the body that we would appreciate breaking down some cellulite, right? So grapefruit is one of the ingredients in Slim and Sassy, and grapefruit is also shown to help break down, break up cellulite. So we are benefiting our skin, we're benefiting our lymphatic system, with the detox bath as well, we're helping our skin and we're helping to get rid of toxins from our body. We're drinking lots of water. You can add the Slim and Sassy to your water and we are just kind of helping things to flow better and the bad things to exit our body and to stimulate our body and our circulation and our lymphatic system to do a better job and to run more smoothly. smoothly. And Slim and Sassy is a great combination. It helps to do all of those things and so you can kind of boost your dry brushing and also boost your I keep looking over there because that's where my bathtub is but boost your um, Epsom salt bath practice you would just add whenever you're adding essential oils to your bath it's a good idea to use some Epsom salt to do that so you take if you're doing a detox bath you know take your cup or your two cups of Epsom salt and add your essential oils to that and then add it to the bath water it helps it to disperse more evenly because the essential oils don't really mix with water otherwise they have a tendency to just like float on the surface of the water so adding the two epsom salt and then adding the salt to your bath is a great way to add them to any kind of bath if you're not doing a full-on epsom salt soak or detox bath you can even just take a little handful of epsom salt and add your essential oil to that and put it in the bath so same thing with the slim and sassy if that's the oil you're going to use to help with your um, detoxing and your Epsom salt detox bath, then just add a few drops. I would say maybe around five drops. When I do balance, I do at least five drops, anywhere from like five to 10 drops of essential oil, um, but play around with it and see what works well for you. So that is today's demo on dry brushing. Debbie is asking, how do you clean them? I don't know because I'm just starting this, but I believe there are instructions. The two links that I shared, I shared a purchasing link for the set that I have, and I shared a link to instructions, and there are more details from the company that I purchased these dry brushes from, so I'm sure there are cleaning instructions there. But I would think with just warm, soapy water and let them dry out. Um, but maybe Jennifer, if Jennifer's still there, how do you, do you know how to clean the dry brushes? How do you clean yours, Jennifer? Maybe she can chime in with some words of wisdom for us. I hope you are inspired to maybe add dry brushing to your own wellness routine. Definitely the Epsom salt bath. Anybody can do that and benefit from that on multiple levels. So um, before we sign off, I'd love to see some more comments. How many of you are planning to incorporate dry brushing into your wellness routine? And like, what's your goal? Do you wanna to try to do it daily? Are you gonna try for how many times a week? What's your goal? And um, also the Epsom salt bath. How many of you already love your Epsom salt bath? Which oils are your favorites to add? How many of you plan to start doing the Epsom salt bath? What do you think about adding Slim and Sassy? Are there other oils you'd like to add? How do you think it will benefit you? Let's get some conversation 
going here. I want to hear, I want to see what you're planning to add in. If anyone, am I just dry brushing here today for your own amusement? <laughs> or are any of you actually going to try this and incorporate it into your routine? You know what is interesting is that my um, skin feel, my it's definitely in fact in impacting my circulation and my skin that's um, really interesting sensation Jennifer says she uses hot soapy water and melaleuca oil to clean her brushes Katie says Epsom salt baths are a family favorite at her house her five-year-old just took one today with balance oil Denise loves the bath is going to try to do the dry brushing. Debbie wants to try it. She's a frankincense girl. Kathy's going to try dry brushing. Wow, lots of comments coming in here. I can't even keep up with them. I can't read them fast enough. Kathy's skin needs help. She's going to try for brushing three times a week. Uh, sorry, y'all. How do I get my finger not to, there we go, show up on your camera. Um, Dee Dee loves taking Epsom salt baths with lavender or serenity. Gillian says, this doesn't make you a gross mom to do a few showers a week. You must have missed the part where I um, announced to everybody that I don't shower every day and I don't apologize for it because it's actually better for you not to shower every day, but she would like to try dry brushing. Rachel is interested. Right now she's gonna try for Epsom salt bath with oils once a week. Eps uh, Jennifer loves her Epsom salt bath, but has never used lemon sassy. She's totally doing that tonight. And Kathy wants to try baths too. Kathy is the one who said she's a shower girl. She's not that into baths. But I promise you, Kathy, when you start reaping all the benefits of the salts and the oils, you will love it. And you know what? Is that you don't, uh, my understanding is that you don't have to soak for a long time in an Epsom salt bath to reap the benefits, which is good for me because I start, I just start to feel hot and like it starts to feel not fun for me. 30 minutes is my max. If I last 30 minutes in the bathtub, um, you know, that's, that's probably a record for me. 20 minutes is more realistic. And I think, I think you can even soak for shorter periods of time and still reap the benefits, but I'm not an expert on that. So definitely look up some of that information. Um, Rachel says a few showers a week. What's that like? <laughs> And Jennifer says, you'll sleep like a baby with the baths. Yes, that is honestly one of the main, the main reasons that I started doing the Epsom salt baths were for sleep and for um, sore muscles. I started doing it. We moved to the farm last year in May and we did so much physical work outside with the garden and with different farm projects. And I was, my body was not ready and I had a lot of sore, achy areas. And so the bathtub was awesome again with the balance or the frankincense or aroma touch um, really helps to soothe the muscles so anyway i could go on and on about all of those things but i won't so i'm going to uh, kathy says she gets bored sitting there in the tub i totally agree i just i'm kind of famous for not being able to sit still and i agree it's like you're trapped in the tub with nothing to do <laughs> even if you're reading i totally agree but i love that time for reading um decorating magazines or um decorating books from the library I'm such a nerd but that's we're doing a lot of decorating and renovating at the farmhouse right now so that's kind of my time that I use for that anyway I'm gonna stop rambling y'all and sign off for today wish you a happy Thursday evening happy almost weekend we'll have one more Facebook live tomorrow on Friday last day of Master Your Metabolism um, keep the comments coming and keep checking in. I want to hear how you're doing with your hydration goals. How's everybody doing with drinking your water? How are you doing with your movement goals? Are you, some of you wanted to do yoga, some of you were walking, some of you just wanted to do a certain amount of steps per day. How is that going? And um, how are you feeling about this whole Master Your Metabolism thing? Are you liking the Yarrow Palm? What do you think about that under your tongue twice a day? How is the Slim and Sassy going in your water? Lifelong Vitality, those of you who are new to it, how is that going? Let us know. You can post a comment here under this video or you can find the specific posts in our Master Your Metabolism unit and post your comments there. Remember that probably the easiest way to go through all the posts in order for Master Your Metabolism is to click on the left. If you're on a computer or a laptop, click on the um, left-hand side where it says Units 
and then find the master your metabolism unit and then you'll see at the top is always the newest post the most recent post and then it goes all the way down to the very first post so if you want to follow along in order you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and just go through in order as you come up and make sure you haven't missed everything um, sometimes the newest post it takes me a little while during the day to get those added to the unit but by the end of the day all of that day's posts are added to the unit um, so almost all of them should be there by now today on Thursday afternoon but um, go catch up on all the posts read about the baths the recipes we made yesterday and the day before um, go back and look at those worksheets if you haven't yet those are some great ways to organize your goals for movement and hydration and sleep and emotional support using the oils to get you going in the morning and throughout the day. Um, I would love to hear more about how all of that is going for you, but I'm gonna sign off and I'll see y'all tomorrow. I will announce the time, I'm not sure what time I'm going live tomorrow. The afternoon has been working well, so I'll probably aim for afternoon again tomorrow for Friday as we wrap up Master Your Metabolism. I'm getting totally parched, I need to keep drinking my water especially to flush all the things out as I just did my dry brushing. So anyway, happy dry brushing y'all, happy detox bathing, and I'll see you tomorrow on Friday for our last day of Mastery of Metabolism, our last Facebook Live. Okay, bye everybody. Thanks for um, hanging out with me this afternoon. Happy oiling, happy dry brushing.